a good way to end the week. We've got turbulence in the market. China is tightening bank reserves. European growth is pulling back. It looks like it could be going into recession. Joining us from Europe is James Turk of Gold Money. And James, let's begin with Greece. The market is very concerned that this could unwind the euro. But as I look at Greece's GDP in relation to the euro, it's I think it's roughly about 2% and almost about the same for Portugal. In the bigger scheme of things, I think Italy, Spain, and other countries are more important. Now, you're over in Europe. How do you view this? Yeah, you know, Greece is sort of the, the soft spot. Uh, the soft spot. That's where it's sort of starting to unravel. But basically, there are several countries in Europe that are in financial difficulty. In fact, there are several countries around the world that are in financial difficulty, including the United States itself. You know, the the question that we have to face here, Jim, is whether this is going to be a bigger unraveling and whether sovereign debt generally is going to become increasingly questioned. And I think that's likely to be the case because they're not really solving the problem. They're just trying to add more debt on top of more debt. In this case, maybe Europe itself, the core of Europe, France and Germany, adding debt to its shoulders to perhaps bail out Greece. We don't know, though, because there hasn't been any official announcement as to what's going to be coming out of Europe. Now, when this crisis began to unfold, you had a move out of the euro, and, of course, the dollar has been the main beneficiary on this Friday. The dollar index is over 80. A lot of pundits are saying, once again, the dollar is the supreme source of safety, and gold has not responded, when do you think gold begins to separate itself from the pack? In other words, people wake up and say, well, gosh, if Greece has problems, the U.S. isn't any better. I mean, if people are worried about Greece, they ought to take a look at my own state of California. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that just points to the U.S. government debt as well, which you know some people say is a safe haven. There's a great article this week by Neil Ferguson, a British historian, who said U.S. government debt is a safe haven the way Pearl Harbor was a safe haven in 1941. You know, eventually something is going to happen to U.S. government debt because it just cannot be sustained. But, you know, it's basically the same thing that we're seeing here in Europe. It's starting with Greece, and there is a contagion because the fact that Greece broke the rules, you know, become a member of of the Eurozone and start using the Euro currency. Every country agreed to certain rules which were supposed to impose a discipline on those countries. Now, Germany and France, you know, most of the core of Europe, they sort of slid a little bit on the rules. They haven't, for example, met the 3% deficit limit. And and in Euroland itself, there's something like 13 countries that have deficits over 3% of GDP, which is supposedly not supposed to happen. But, you know, the, the breaking of the rules by Greece was so flagrant that, you know, the market has finally taken notice and is calling, you know, Greece on the carpet. And what the Eurozone should do to maintain the credibility of the Eurozone itself and the Euro, you know, Greeks knew what rules they had to play by. They broke the rules, therefore they should be expelled from the Eurozone and, you know, let Greece go remain a part of the European Union, but do like other countries do that haven't joined the Eurozone, just maintain their own national currency. Do you think that's what they'll do, though? I think it's a good possibility. You know, Germany's not in a bad situation. There's a lot of money moving from the southern part of Europe into the northern part of Europe. So there is liquidity moving into the German banks. You know, the thinking being is that I don't want to hold euros in a Greek bank. I want to hold euros in a German bank because if Greece leaves the Union, those euros in Greek banks are going to be devalued because they're going to now be called drachmas and no longer be called euros. So, you know, to a certain extent, Germany is is in the driver's seat, and they're not hurting from the present situation. I think the real question, though, is whether or not the German banks are going to put pressure on the German government, you know, to bail out Greece. The reason being is that the banks of Europe have a lot of exposure to Greece debt. They've purchased a lot of derivative instruments, and if Greece defaults, or if they break out of the euro, you know, some of those instruments are going to cause losses for the banks. So... It's touch and go at the moment. I hope the Eurozone does the right thing by allowing Greece to leave the Union or expel them because they broke the rules, but only time will tell. If they try to engineer some kind of a phony bailout, uh, that, I think, going to undermine the credibility of Europe and the whole Eurozone itself and could lead to further weakness in the euro currency. 
Let's talk about gold for a moment, because when we were in the credit crisis in the fall, especially after Lehman in 2008, you saw a rally in the dollar. The Fed engineered a $600 billion currency swap with other central banks. The dollar got stronger. We saw Treasury yields drop to 2%. Fast forward to today, we have now sovereign problems, and gold has pulled back. When do you think gold begins to decouple from it, let's say, these other problems? In other words, it becomes the safe haven of choice for most investors. You know, I think it already has to a certain extent, Jim. You know, back in 2008, gold was hit because there was a lot of deleveraging going on throughout the world. A lot of that deleveraging is past. You know, there is still a lot of leverage, and there are still some hedge funds that need to deleverage, as well as banks need to deleverage. But a lot of that pressure that occurred back in 2008 isn't around this time. And if you look at what happened to gold after the Lehman collapse versus how little gold has actually dropped today, it's really inconsequential. And in terms of the euro, you know, gold is right back to its all-time highs. So I think that the coupling has occurred, and there's a logical reason for it. You know, right now, people are looking not so much for liquidity. They're looking for safety. So I think you're starting to see money looking at gold as a safe haven. And the fact that we've bounced so strongly off of that 1050 floor, I think is a good indication that the low for the year in gold is is now in place and it's going to be up in much higher gold prices as we work our way through the course of the year. What I find rather fascinating, James, I was reading a report from Ned Davis last night and they were talking about market sentiment and especially sentiment in the gold market. It's gone from euphoria when we were above 1,200 now to some of the lowest levels that we've seen. A lot of the gold technicians, actually even uh, a lot of technical newsletters are very, very bearish on gold. It's almost like things have swung to the opposite side. We have over-bullishness in sentiment in terms of the dollar and over-bearishness in terms of the gold market. Yeah, you're absolutely right, and it, it's really very, very bullish. I mean, we had here we had John Paulson, who started a gold fund, one of the most successful hedge fund managers of all time, you know, made a fortune in the subprime crisis, put $250 million of his own money in the gold fund, and all they could raise throughout the world was $90 million. People just aren't interested in gold. And if, the other thing that you mentioned, technicians becoming bearish. If you look at the gold chart, it's extremely bullish. You know, gold hasn't even fallen below its 200-day moving average. It's still above that, plus the longer-term technical pattern coming out of this huge base above $1,000 an ounce. It's just also bullish, and that's why I tend to think that this was the low for the year that we've seen just recently and that it's going to be much higher. It's going to be much higher because the problems that have been causing gold to rise have not been solved. You know, governments are still creating currency too rapidly rather than addressing the core problems, which is that we need to produce and save rather than borrow and spend. You know, it's funny because the gold bears are arguing like for here in the United States, you turn on, you watch Fox News, they've got all kinds of commercials for buying gold, you have commercials for companies that will buy your gold jewelry, and they're signaling, a lot of the the gold bears are signaling that as a sort of sign that gold has reached mania proportions. And, James, you remember last fall when gold was running up to 1,200, you had articles in Fortune magazine and the Wall Street Journal talking about gold being in a bubble. From what I've seen, you talk to the average fund manager that runs an equity fund, how much do they really have in gold equities? And for that matter, is the public really on board with the gold market at this time? No, they're definitely not. And, you know, these advertisements, uh, sell your jewelry, cash for gold, that's not a sign that gold's in a bubble. That's a sign that the economy is in really bad shape and that people are taking the little bits of gold that they have, trying to raise cash to meet their bills and expenses or pay the rent or whatever. You know, gold is doing what it, it always does. It's a form of savings and a store of value, and it's there for a rainy day. It's a rainy day for a lot of people, so they're cashing in their gold. That's not a sign of that gold is in a bubble. What do you think will be the catalyst for the next move upward in gold? Will it be, for example, right now you've got China tightening bank reserves, trying to slow down even though their money 